And um, we do have a quorum. I want to note the presence of a quorum that we have for the record and also to our friends in Albany. How's the weather up there in Albany? Not too bad, actually. How are you doing down there? That's good. Good. It's Thank you. It's, it's spring here. I hope it's spring there. Uh, well, it has been for about three or four days. I think we're uh, getting back into the, uh, the normalcy of uh, upstate New York. Right. Fall, so. Okay. Well, thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, ask everybody if they could just turn off. I think you have to turn off you know, your, your phones, your iPhones, your Blackberries, and all of that. So if you can just stay disconnected for a little while. I know that you will. With all, as I will, however we'll be able to get through it together. And so we'll, we'll be in good shape. Um, what I'd like to do is to ask, first of all, if you have read, if you've read the uh, minutes. Has any, has everybody read the minutes and any questions regarding the minutes at all? If there are no questions, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the minutes then. So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. All in favor? Uh, opposed abstentions it passes thank you very much and uh, the first item that I'd like to go to is going to be the resolution of the uh, the CUCF uh, authorizing a construction services contract for the Bursar office at Kingsborough Community College and so resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund also known as the, the fund authorizes the executive director to execute a construction services contract Office renovation for Kingsborough Community College, uh, CUNY project number KG017005. The contract shall be awarded to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder after soliciting multiple competitive bids pursuant to the law and university guidelines. 50% of the contract shall be chargeable to the uh, city capital budget and also 50% to the New York State Capital Funds for a total not to exceed $1.2 million. And of course, the contract shall be subject to approval as to form by the Funds General Counsel. And so if we could just have just a brief explanation uh, regarding this item um, from the Executive Director. Sure. Um, uh, this is a, a project that we've been working on for a while with Kingsborough. And as you noted, it's a uh, project which would um, update and modernize the Burst Arms Area College. Um, a much smaller project, and then when we sort of started to delve into it, it became clear that there were more things that the college wanted to do. And since we had the money, the match uh, from, from the city, we agreed to go ahead and, and expand this, uh, this project. So basically, um, the project will include New care shear counters, a new office suite for the Bursar, um, uh, including office space for the accountants who work at, uh, at Kingsborough, and um, we will be putting in uh, bullet-resistant windows uh, where we have the counters and we actually pay oh, okay. checks and cash. So That's great. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a project that the college has been waiting a while for, and we're glad that we can start to build it. That's good. Well, thank you very much. Um, any other information that any uh, individuals need on this particular item? So can I have a motion to, to approve? Um, is there second. a second? Second. Opposed abstentions. Thank you very much. Uh, one of the items that I neglected to mention I'd like to do it because I think it's important, uh, especially for new guests that we have, that they understand and know everybody who's at the table and also that we can uh, welcome our guests. So again, I'll, I'll just go around and then we'll have you um, just introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Philip Berry. I'm the acting um, director, uh, chairman of the construction fund. So. I'm Iris Weichel. I'm the executive director of the construction fund. Vice chancellor of CUNY. Herbert Schaefer, council. I'm Bob Lemieux, executive director of the construction of CUNY. Gwen Perlman, director of capital budget for CUNY. <coughs> Victor Naya, controller for the fund. <coughs> John Antonelli, Director of Financial Compliance. Megan Mulder, Director of uh, Space Planning for the University. I'm Nancy Nichols, Assistant for the Fund. Let's do uh, Albany and then we'll come back around. Sure. Uh, this is Zach Scarcalli from the State Budget Division. Jennifer Friedman, Director of Public Private Partnership Project. Stagos Dunter Authority, Director of Construction. Uh, Judy Bergton, Deputy and Vice Chancellor. Howard Altschuller, uh, Deputy Executive Director of the Fund. My phone next door. Trustee. Trustee. 
Well, thank you, Trustee. Thank you all. I'm Professor Kate Conway. I'm the silent faculty observer. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you a faculty member? Urban I, I happen to love that college. It was my alma mater, so thank you very much. Welcome to our proceedings. Uh, what I'd like to do is to go into action item number three, uh, which is going to concern the approval of the annual certificate for fiscal year 2013, actually. And so resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University Construction Fund approve the annual certificate for fiscal year 2013 dated November 10th, 2011 in the form attached here too. And the acting chairman of the fund is hereby authorized and directed to execute and deliver the annual certificate on behalf of the fund and be it resolved that the board of trustees of the fund approves the filing of IRS form 990, which is the exempt organization for the uh, period ending June 30th, 2011. And I think, Howie, would you want to go into some uh, details about this and why, um, and I think the trustees might want to know why are we approving now this annual certificate for 2013, if you could just go through that process. The, the uh, 125B of the Ed Law, which is the fund law, uh, requires that the fund report annually on the expected expended uh, debt service uh, payments to be made in the, in the upcoming year, which is based on an estimate we received from DASNY for the outstanding bond. That's what you see in the certificate broken down by the individual bond issues. Um, together with that, we are required to provide a budget for the fund for the upcoming year. The revenues that the fund receives for tuition and fees which is also included in the certificate. Um, we also, I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought now. Yeah, those are the main drivers that we're required to report on. Um, but as a, as a public benefit corporation, the C3 corporation, we are required to file 990 uh, forms with the IRS. It, and those forms, uh, it, I will say, in, in the past, um, we there's no bylaw requirement or board requirement that the board members approve them. And up until last year, we had not taken the 990s uh, to the board. By changes in the format of the 990 and because of, uh, I, I would say instances of fraud that, that the IRS has found around the, co the country with tax exempt organizations, they have uh, entered as part of the 990 a questionnaire that, that kind of uh, is designed to find or for highlight any potential fraud. And one of the requirements, is, one of the questions in that is, has the board seen this document? So um, we would like to answer yes, and that's why we are taking it for the board. Uh, the, uh, the the 990 is based uh, on the financial statement, which is also included, which, which delineates the fund's revenues and expenses, the debt service that we paid uh, over the year that ended in, in June. And you know, if, you, if you have any specific questions about the document, I'll be happy to answer them. Victor is on the floor, as you know. And, and I have a question about the uh, MDA uh, management discussion and analysis. Mm -hmm. Just uh, are there any uh, extraordinary items, uh, changes this year from last year that we need to be aware of? A actually, no. In fact, this was one of the easiest closings we've done since I've been here. Uh, Victor has done a uh, really good job of keeping the books and uh, with uh, our, our 
accountants, if you, I'm sure you read the letter, but they highlight, didn't really highlight any, any particular issues at all. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, can I just yes, say, um, you know, um, uh, Howard and staff have, have really done an excellent job in terms of, um, I think, taking CDCF to the next level, um, both in light of uh, the fact that um, we're now doing a lot more projects on our own, as well as um, you know, the public authorities uh, bill that passed in Albany a couple of years ago required us to comply with many more uh, reporting standards. Um, and uh, you know, stop facing. But let me just say that he's really put together a very good team between uh, John Antonelli and, and Victor. Um, I really feel confident now that, uh, and, and probably that's why we had a good year in terms of closing out the book. So uh, I really have to much the work that they've done. No, thank, thank you for that commentary. That's, it's important to have good people managing our books, uh, and, and <laughs> the public disclosures are extremely important, and so we need to be sure that we're doing this in the right way and have the right eyes and, and hands on it. So thank, thank you very much. We really appreciate the, uh, the labor that goes into ensuring this because it's not easy to. I have another question. There, there was an item uh, that I read regarding the uh, the revenue sources of, of monies from uh, from Disney to us, and whether that might impact, you know, our ongoing operating uh, uh, budget. If, if I read that correctly, and I can go to that item, would you want to just elaborate? If, if you find out specifically which one it is. Page five: Economic factors that may affect the future, and so, uh, so tuition and fees from CUNY and appropriations from the state, payments and investment drive the revenues of CUCF. And so, uh, the continuation of blah blah, the continuation of reimbursements uh, of salaries and fringe benefits from DASNY will continue to reduce uh, CUCF's operating expenses. Okay. So, if we could just try to understand that particular, the, I'd like to understand that. The the staff of the fund and the FPCN who work on all of our capital projects mm -hmm. are those salaries, the administrative costs of FPCN, mm -hmm. is, is billable to the capital budget. And that's the, the thrust of that, that, that uh, as long as DASI is able to sell bonds, we are able to, it's not just the projects, it's also the staff. There's an administrative associated with it. Uh, overhead that gets paid. There, there is an administrative overhead, um, but it all it all gets built into the billing. Um, we have split staff. Some of our staff is, is paid through the Research Foundation, some are paid through the CUNY. Um, but all of our administrative costs are billable to the capital budget, and that that's really the reference to DASN because DASN is, a, is our bonding agent. And twice a year, uh, sometimes three times a year, we will do billings for salaries and reimburse the, the foundation, uh, the research foundation or CUNY as appropriate. And so the timing of that doesn't affect us from the standpoint of having, we don't have to go out and borrow or anything. No, no. We, in order we, have to no we have no. Um, no authority to sell bonds. I'm, I'm sure, you know, as a as a public corporation, we could if we needed to take a loan, but we do not need to do that. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Any other questions? Then I'd like to have. Oh, one other question. I'm sorry. The um, I remember several years ago, I've been on this fund for a while. There were uh, annual reports that were produced. I haven't seen those in the last few years. The, 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 the glossy report. Yes, yeah. What, what, we what's we up are with we that? are working on that. <laughs> actually, <laughs> the, the 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 eight by ten color glossy right. photographs. Yeah, the olive gaffer. Olive gaffer. With the photos with the circles and arrows and the picture. Mm -hmm. uh, we've done that because all we are really required to do is this, mm -hmm. but the. We'll probably talk about this a little bit later in our discussion, but there have been some changes in the public authorities' law, as you know, that 
uh, requires this report and in addition to this report a statement of your accomplishments, which is really what that mm -hmm. report did. Mm -hmm. And we are in the process of uh, putting something like that together for this year. Right. Mm -hmm. That'll be this year or next year? I mean, it, it will cover this year. It'll come out next year, but it'll be, it'll be covering the events right. of this year. Right. right now, there, we have some pressing, conflicting responsibilities. The state, as, as you may or may not know, is instituting a new budget operating system called SFS between state DOB. And a lot of the staff that would be working on that report are working on that transition. So it, it's conflicting priorities yeah, for us sure. right now. So yeah, it's more the whether so or not we, it would be occurring as opposed to the timing. So it is something we definitely want to get to. Okay, thank you. And thank it's you. A nice, it'll be a nice document. Yeah, yeah. no, I think, it'd be, it, I think it's an important document, you know, for a number of people because it's it's a marketing device that continues to enroll people in what we're doing and, and how well we're doing it. And, and so the word always has to go out. We, we can't forget those type of activities as we're embroiled in the bushes, you know, to continue to, to highlight, you know, so that relevant bodies can stay involved and uh, you know as new elections come up there are new people that have to uh, be convinced you know that uh, and also need to understand how well monies are being spent and we, we want to uh, spread that word I think also as the legislative session gets started it's always a good document to walk around with yes. all the involved in the work and this, you know, the legislature of course is responsible for many of the projects that get funded. Exactly. Yeah, we just want to keep it on the top of mind. So yeah. So it's very good. Thank you very much. Uh, is there any other questions? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. And also thank you very much, uh, Holly and all of your staff. Thank you. There. Uh, I thank appreciate you. Really do appreciate the work. Uh, the item number five, then, uh, on my, let's see, which is which concerns the mission statement and performance standards for the fund. Mm -hmm. And so resolve that the board trustees of the City University Construction Fund adopt the following mission statement and performance standards for the fund. That the uh, mission statement would be that the CUCF, that the mission of the CUCF is to manage the resources necessary for the design and construction of space required to support the of the City University of New York. And I think it's worth me reading these performance standards because I think they're pretty good. Um, to design and build a cost-effective, high-quality capacity to meet the long-term needs of the City University, of uh, the university system. Uh, in turn, to ensure the maximum use of energy-efficient green technology in designing new buildings and in the replacement of existing building systems. Three, to maintain the highest standards of business integrity and financial accountability through good management and internal controls. Four, to establish and maintain analytic processes to identify the budgetary requirements necessary to support the infrastructure needs of the individual colleges. And five, to implement and maintain a successful minority and women-owned business enterprise program. Uh, so let's say uh, this is seeing uh, this come before us, uh, I think it's an excellent piece, and so why this, why now? Uh, this is also a requirement of the Public Authorities uh, Control Act that passed the legislature, and um, they've had many requirements, but mm -hmm. one is that we have a mission statement and a performance standard, and uh, uh, I'll just turn this over to Howard, since he and staff have been working on this. But that's really it is. It is a, a requirement uh, to together in, in the package. There was a separate document, which is that the authorities who are required to all uh, have members to complete. And one of the items in that form is an acknowledgement of the mission statement. So the form. <laughs> government and which is the driving force for the uh, uh, 
Yeah. The change to the public affairs law in 2005 and then the subsequent change in 2009 that added some of these additional responsibilities. Mm -hmm. the, but even without that, it's, it's a good thing to have a mission statement. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, it gives people an, an idea of what you're about. There's some of friends over there. Mike and, and his crew have a, a, an excellent mission statement as well. That's that covers their board authority, but it's pretty much the same. Um, so we 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 require you know, we think this was the right time to do it. So we're bringing it to you for your approval. Okay. And any um, any other questions? I mean, I think that the uh, I'm not sure if we have to uh, counsel I'll, I'll take a word on this before we move forward because this uh, statement here would say that we have uh, read it, that we agreed to it and all. Do we need to sign, read and sign this before we approve this motion? Or we approve the motion first? Motion first. Okay. Because then I just want to just spend a little time with this. What we like about the performance standards uh, is that it covers uh, internal and external issues. Uh, it, it speaks to the, uh, what, is, what is our reason for being? You know, with, which is what a mission statement should state. And so, especially in light of the decade of the sciences and things that we're, we're doing to further that, and we do see, in fact, that we've been operating in that mode, you know, as we've been uh, building, you know, and so this, this really addresses the spirit of the way we've been operating, and it's a guide for us. Uh, we, we want to have great capacity, we want to have energy efficient technology and buildings, uh, this is great. Um, make sure that we have financial standards in, in place that ensure that we can do these things, uh, processes to help us identify and support infrastructure needs, and also, you know, I'm also glad to see uh, the number five, maintaining a successful minority and women-owned business enterprise. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the only, uh, and, and I think it's in here, uh, around making sure that we maintain okay. I guess that would be a, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's the campus's responsibility. Okay. Now, of course, if there's an emergency and the campuses can't we assist in the really step in and assist them, but um, you know, it's like buying a new car, you know? Yeah. You turn over the building, you give them the keys, and they run with it. Mm -hmm. in the service department. <laughs> So, Anita, thank you for that piece. Uh, any other, anything else that seems to be missing or anything in terms of performance standards? Nice to be with you. So, I'd like to have a motion, therefore, to approve this uh, oh. mission and statement performance standards. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you very much. That carries. And I'd like to. Uh, we can cover this after the meeting. I think I think it's important that people read through all of this before they sign it. Sure. But this may be the first time you've the trustees. Yeah. If you want to discuss it afterwards, I'd be happy to stay around. If you want to take it home, uh, I'll uh, start nagging you in about three days. You both have to, yeah. So make sure you read through this so that we understand. I don't think there's anything. No. Yeah. And actually, the, 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 the public authorities board, the mm -hmm. uh, budget office, right? Mm -hmm. they, this is, they created a series of documents. They were charged with pulling these things uh, out. In, in, as part of their mandate, and you know, we, we could have tried to write one, but the way that they put out covers all of the requirements in the law, so we we only wanted, just to give you an example, the one that they put out, uh, we first have board of directors, so we made changes to board of trustees. Mm -hmm. Things like that, we, yes. we couldn't stand the word authority we put in. Yeah. Otherwise, it is identical to the, to the document created by the board. Mm -hmm. well, what I was trying to say is that if we had done it from scratch, it would have, it would have read that. <laughs> 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 
exactly right. Uh, so let's see, did we pass that? So we can do this test. Okay, thank you. So then the next thing is to have reports with the chair. And uh, let's see, I think the one thing I'm concerned about, I, guess I think we're covered offline, is when the next meeting will take place. But we'll cover that offline yeah. only because of traveling. And the holidays. And the holidays. Is there, uh, one of the things that I know we're looking at with some of the other bodies is how we might continue to do, uh, use a video conference calling and, and so I don't know, we, that might be something we'll look further into. We already do it here with our Albany connection, but I'm wondering if uh, considerations, if uh, some well, other trustees are out. I, I think also like the CUNY board is using iPads. Um, mm -hmm. It's our hope to um, switch over to that form of technology to cut down on the amount of paper that we yeah, uh, circulate. Good, good. Writing here. Yes, so we, we're, we're working with um, uh, the uh, CIS uh, group here at CUNY to do that. Nancy will be involved because uh, Nancy worked with the facilities committee of the board to switch over to the iPad application. That, that would also include making sure that access is available to all the public entity that needs yes. to know, so there would be a computer link or something yeah, like yeah. that. that whatever, whatever the community board did, we would, would replicate that. Yeah. As well. And it seemed to work, work fine, you know, say anybody else, and, mm -hmm. including, you know, the faculty who wants to get access to it, <coughs> have mm -hmm. access to it at time, so. Okay. Um, so I don't have anything else to report. Why don't we look at these capital budget requests and um, the executive director can just take sure. a look at that piece. So rather than do my usual spiel about our great successes, I thought that I would um, talk about the capital budget. We have a CUNY board meeting that comes up in November, and traditionally um, both the expense and capital budgets are approved by the board. Um, we had a facilities meeting on October... 31st. 31st. I was going to get to that. Um, I'm sorry. And uh, at that committee meeting, we presented the capital budget. But since this body deals primarily with the capital budget, I thought it was wise to take you through a similar presentation. Um, so uh, let me just say that, uh, as everybody knows, um, we operate on a five-year plan. We are in the fifth year of the official five-year plan that was approved by the state. Um, and we are hopeful that uh, we will um, be embarking on a new five-year plan with the state, although we have not gotten any indication yet that they want to start engaging us. Um, I, it's, we're, we're, in the, we're, we're about to start the fifth year. Yeah, yeah, right. That's what I meant. Um, and as I said, the uh, governor and his staff have, have not yet said whether they're going to start a whole new five-year process. Um, uh, and our expectations are, are fairly low in light of the economic outlook um, for, for the state. Is there, is there a question? Yes, I just want to ask Albany if they can see this presentation clearly at their end. Zach, can you see it? I can, yes, thank okay. you. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so, uh, my first year as, as Vice Chancellor, uh, we prepared a, uh, a full five-year plan, um, and it was a, a great start. This was $1.8 billion, um, and uh, uh, some of the projects on that list were only partially funded, not fully funded, which is traditional um, in, in a capital plan that the state does. Um, and Traditionally, um, agencies in both SUNY and CUNY will, over the intermittent years, go back to the legislature to get additional funding uh, for these projects. And I think you've heard us speak here before that um, one of the problems that we're confronting is not so much the appropriations we have, but the spending plan. Because DASNY has to actually go out and sell bonds to cover uh, that cash. And, um, there is a concern about the debt service and the amount of debt service that the state can, can, uh, can, can carry. So in the last three years, we've, uh, we've received some additional money. It's mostly been for critical maintenance. Um, and as well, um, the state has held to their commitment not only to fund the critical maintenance uh, projects for the four-year schools, 
But where we are able to get a city match, they have kept to their word and they have then funded the other 50% um, from, from the state. Um, and let me just say that in the last three years, the main focus has been critical maintenance. Um, so um, as a result of the, of the many years of the budget process, we have a lot of appropriations already set aside for two not cash, but appropriations. That's good, not bad. It's good to have the appropriations. It would be great to have the appropriations and the cash, but we'll, we'll live with what we have. Um, so uh, CUNY currently has $3.3 billion in uh, senior college appropriations and $568 million in community college uh, appropriations. And as, as this committee knows, we have spent a lot of time focused on critical maintenance on all institutions. As you also know, um, we did a study back in 2008-2009 which showed a huge gap in terms of the critical maintenance, uh, both uh, projects that we had uh, listed as well as the money to go along with them. And um, uh, Bob, working along with um, Mike Stabulous and the DASNY folks, we have put a lot of that money into the pipeline. And I would dare say, if you go on to any one of our 24 campuses, you will see a, a tremendous amount of critical maintenance projects going on. Some of them are of a nature that you wouldn't even know the projects are going on, but they're very important uh, to the, the life of these campuses. Um, so um, uh, of the total allocations of 284 million that we've gotten over the years, um, I would say there's probably well in excess of over 200 projects now uh, circulating on, on the four campuses. Um, as you also know, um, you know, uh, a challenge for us is that we need the other 50%. We get 50% from the state, 50% from the city to the community colleges. And um, I might say that the chancellor, of working along with Jay um, and his, uh, his staff that really monitors the city council, has been very effective in terms of getting us money during the budget process to fund that other 50%, which is, is, uh, is very important. Um, and uh, elected officials have been uh, very helpful. Um, the borough presidents have, have forwarded money for, for uh, critical maintenance projects. Clearly, elected officials would prefer more sexy projects, but I think that they have um, come to realize that if, if the ship is not running correctly, there's no point in, in giving us other projects because we can't we can't build them we can't support them um, on our campuses. Um, and, you know, and, and we would come back to that later. I mean, like in having this report that that helps the people to. The, the, there's a way that all of the work, even the maintenance stuff that we're doing, can be viewed as extremely sexy and extremely appealing. You know, very very inviting. And and so by doing some things like that, we can help. But what they want is to be able to have something so that they can show yes. to their constituents. And they can put it back on. Yeah. And we can help them with, with that. So then that way it would invite them to even support us even more. So, um. mm -hmm. And, and I, you know, I, I want to also, um, uh, the college presidents themselves and the community colleges have really stuck to the program. Um, you know, they're not asking for new dance studios or new, you know, mm -hmm. You know, labs, um, they have stuck to the script, and, and when they see the local elected officials, it's all been about critical maintenance. Mm -hmm. And so, over the last three years, CUNY's received over a hundred million dollars in city funding for these projects. Um, and I think, as, as this board knows, we are committed to the Mayor's Plan NYC program, and we've received $22 million from that program, because there was a fair amount of capital mm -hmm. uh, set aside as well as we've gotten uh, a, a tremendous amount of resolving money, not only from the borough president, but from individual members as well. So the next slide um, shows you um, uh, the amount of money that we have spent in the past five years, which has been $2.2 billion. And I would dare say, not since CUNY went through its last resurgence, which was in the 70s, spent so much money on, on its, its building program. Um, 
So uh, it's we, we have put a lot of money out there, but more importantly, we've created a lot of jobs. So that's that's very good. Um, so um, we uh, we are expediting, as I, I, I told you, our work both with DASNY as well as our own project management team. Um, and the question always comes up, well, how did you spend all this money? How were you able to be successful? And let me just say that we modernized and renovated ourselves so that we have, as this board knows, because we brought to you a number of requirements contracts now so that projects can get off the ground much more quickly. Um, we um, reorganize our offices, as I said. Um, we have many more professionals who are um, doing internal engineering and project management here at, uh, at CUNY, so we're able to more efficiently and effectively. And we put greater emphasis on public-private partnerships, which allows you know us to partner with our private entities who aren't really um, encumbered by the same uh, rules and regulations that we are, so it allows projects to get done more quickly and for spending to get done more quickly. Um, so we have we have done a lot and uh, it's it's really showing in, our, in the amount of work that we're putting out there. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, we have uh, um, uh, just on our in critical maintenance, just on our senior college campuses alone, we have well over 300 projects that are going on, on our community colleges, 77 projects. And let me just say that, you know, you're right. I mean, if we can find an ability for an elected official uh, to have a ribbon cutting or to put their name on something, that, that's really important. Um, and I just want to point out, which I visited last week, which is really impressive when you consider it. Um, New York City Tech needed to do, redo their entire, um, well, I'm sorry. No, the, uh, uh, the, oh, boiler the boiler plant, right. because in anticipation of building the new building that we're going to build out right. there, we didn't have the capacity to hook that building into uh, New York City Tech system. While the college was operating uh, below grade, mm -hmm. we built a complete new uh, boiler system uh, for the college. Boiler and chiller plant. They, they never came offline. They always had what they needed. And um, when you see that project, it's, you know, for nerds like us, it was, it's <laughs> really, really impressive. You know, it's not a beautiful building like John Jay, but it will enable them to have that beautiful building. And without it, uh, I don't think that, that, that we would be able to do that. And so we have a lot of critical maintenance projects, as I noted, um, uh, at Hunter, the escalate problems. Um, as I said, in New York City Tech, we did the boil plant, as well as we, we're redoing Warren's Hall. Um, the, the skin and the exterior of the building is being redone, and i got to tell you, it's going to look spectacular when it is finished. Um, at the CCNY, um, we, we're, we're still working on Shepherd Hall and on the facade restoration, which, as everybody knows, is a historic building, and we're taking good care. And at York, we're, we're still grappling with the groundwater infiltration problem uh, at, at that campus as well. On the community college side, just to be very brief, if you go to Bronx Community College, uh, it looks like a war zone, but it's a war zone that we created. Um, uh, we have a number of phases to the project, but you know uh, uh, we are working on their HVAC system, which is in, in, in terrible condition. At, at BMCC, we're also doing HVAC upgrades. And at LaGuardia uh, Center 3, which is an enormous building, as we've, as we've mentioned here before, the facade and the windows are coming out and down, and so we're starting the first phase of, of their their upgrade. Just on the box, just for a quick second, uh, are we going to be using the, the, some of the Ingersoll systems with that one, or do you know? You said that there's some Ingersoll? HVAC systems? Or well, right now what we're doing, Ingersoll the first two phases of that project are to, put, or to do the very disruptive campus activities, digging the trenches, putting the piping in the ground. Mm -hmm. And the third phase would be to start doing new boilers, uh, new chiller, some, some additional chiller, and a new electrical connection to Con Ed. So that's the third, their third and fourth phases. I don't think, I don't know if we've selected uh, Ingersoll or, or whatever they okay, no, you know, it's going to be. But the first that's how we're doing something at Brooklyn College. No, that's Ingersoll Hall. Um, but the, the intent at Bronx Community College is to get the 
can more really disrupt the aspects of the project finished in the first two phases. Get that done right away, and then we'll do that. We'll do the stuff that's in the buildings and not as disruptive to the campus. Oh, this is what the new president found when she came there. Uh, we actually she started before she came, um, and uh, you know uh, she's been a great partner, and, and uh, Bob and his team have been out there to brief her. Uh, on she the found planet. a building, so oh, yeah, she's yeah, 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 so, um, Did you speak to BMCC? I'm sorry. Did you? Uh, no, it's BMCC. Yeah, I did. Um, so, at the end of the day, um, our request is going to be similar to last year. Uh, for the senior uh, colleges, we're going to request um, 5.6, uh, I'm sorry, 4.3 billion dollars, and for the community colleges, 1.3 billion. Now, people say, well, with the economy so bad and with things uncertain, why do you put this all together? because we want to be ready. Um, we want to, you know, plan and have our projects ready. If Providence should strike, we want to make sure that we're set to go and we will uh, have have our projects in, in place. So uh, that's, that's really important. And let me just say that the request uh, is in line with the university's priorities. Um, first and foremost, to get funds to finish existing projects. Um, we have a limited number of new strategic initiatives. Uh, we're finishing uh, the uh, schematic plan for York, their new building, as well as we just hired an architect for the College of Staten Island for their um, uh, high definition, interdisciplinary, high, high definition performance computing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, I remember that. And the last thing is that we are continuing our priority of the decade of the sciences that Chancellor Goldstein uh, has set down for us. So that requires, you know, uh, looking at phase two of the Lehman uh, Science Building as well as looking at phase two of the ASRC conference. So I just want to quickly go through some of our successes this year. You've, you've heard me talk about these. We opened up in September uh, the new Silverman School of Social Work and CUNY School of Public Health up in East Harlem. And uh, that, that project is gorgeous. 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 Adjacent to that, uh, the new Graduate Center apartments opened up, um, and I want to point out that they are fully leased, 100% day one. Really? And yep. that project is, not only that, not only with students, but with faculty as well, they've taken apartments in the facility. Also this September, uh, we opened up the new Simulation Center, um, which we're doing in conjunction with NYU, the Bellevue Building. And this was a very successful public-private partnership, and um, the center is going just, just terrific. Uh, if you go up to City College, as you know, as this board knows, we had terrible trouble with Marshak. Um, uh, you will not recognize the building. Uh, <laughs> it looks entirely different. Entirely different. Entirely different. different. The, um, uh, the, the facade work will be complete in a couple of weeks. How do you end of the year? Yeah, the end of the year, which is a couple of few weeks. And um, then we're going to start on phase two of the Marshak building, which is interior. You know, if we had had space, I think this university would have been better off just demolishing the building, but we had no space to move uh, mm -hmm. that function. So it's just imagine totally renovating your house and living in it. That's that's basically what we're doing. Fair enough. I had one house and I did that. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, <laughs> last week, <laughs> last week we opened up uh, the first phase of the new John. Yes. And this will show you the green roof facing the um, facing the facing the high rise, which will be opening up also uh, by the January January by the beginning of the year. Um, Fitman Hall is on schedule on budget. I don't want to give us a you know, bad luck, but uh, that that project is, is is going well, and now we're focusing on the the internal part of the building and building out the space. And I always like this phase of construction because you get the optimal number of construction workers. Um, so when I go to the site, I always ask how many people are working and on this site. There's, there's a couple hundred. We talked about Bronx Community College. Again, a project that um, is on time, on schedule, on budget, uh, and it's a gorgeous building. Uh, Robert Stern really did a great job. And I just want to tell this committee, I was in Washington on Tuesday with the new president, tried for years to get 
national historic status for the McKim White Building. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And you may say, well, why would you want to do that? Because then you're able to get grant money mm -hmm. um, for these buildings. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Department of the Interior uh, approved the, uh, the status on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, those buildings now will, uh, will be part of the National Historic Trust, mm -hmm. and therefore we will be able to. And I have to say that this new almost 100,000 square foot building is truly spectacular. It's, it's got a, a modern, up-to-date library. Uh, a number of, uh, of uh, classrooms are in there, and it's, uh, it's going to be done uh, by the summer. And, and, and he did an amazing job of basically marrying it into the surrounding Mickey White mm -hmm. buildings. I mean, it looks like it was always there. It's mm -hmm. so spectacular. Mm -hmm. Uh, the Lehman uh, Science Complex, um, uh, although not on schedule, um, it was supposed to open this year and it's opening next year, is still um, quite a uh, advanced science uh, building, and it will be the only uh, project probably currently that will have platinum status. Platinum status on the Lehman side. side. Mm -hmm. um, and for a science building, that is amazing. Yeah. So, so um, we're very excited about that project. And um, we're doing a lot of work up at Ostos, um, particularly on the 500 uh, Grand Concourse building. Uh, we're doing a lot of renovations to the various floors, as well as roof replacement, and uh, we're doing upgrades of all the, the bathrooms in that. that Top down, no more. Another project <laughs> that um, is, uh, is going to be completed um, uh, by the summer, but pieces of it are being handed over to the college right now is the Kufferberg Performing Arts Center at Queens College. Projects. It's not just one building, but we're working on a number of performing arts buildings on the campus. And um, I believe that the president already had a reception in one of the buildings. And they had a performance in, in the auditorium so this weekend. So it, it's moving along. And of course, um, you know, another one of our great uh, public-private partnerships is with CUNY, uh, CUNY Law. Construction will be completed because we had to do renovation for the building by January, um, and then we will start to do the other work that needs to go in. But the, uh, the, the demolition and the heavy steel that had to go in will be completed uh, by January. Um, and the law school will be moving in uh, by the summer of 2012. Uh, as I mentioned, at uh, Warwick Hall at City Tech, we're putting up a new glass curtain wall, and uh, once that goes up, this building will really stand out between the two bridges. Really That's the way it looks now. It's not going to look like that at <laughs> the end of the day. <laughs> That's the last, um, is ASRC. Um, and, uh, here is just one of the buildings. There are two buildings going up. One's the CCNY building, one's the ASRC. The curtain wall is going up. It should be uh, completed um, when do you Next think? summer. Right. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> the good news is that uh, we got approval from um, uh, DOB to proceed with the uh, we're doing the mechanical, the electrical, the plumbing in the building. So um, this project is moving forward. Uh, we hope to complete it as we anticipated by 2014. Mm -hmm. So um, those are uh, all the items, and, and this is our approach in terms of the capital budget. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Ex excellent work. Uh, and questions from the other? No, I just like to commend you. Uh, you don't have any of the architects to start it from the bottom up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great work, and, and you know, the, the fact is, is that uh, you make it seem so, but it's not. No, no. It's it's very difficult to be able to pull together all of the players, uh, to get the teamwork going, the partnerships, and also to get the funding right, and mm -hmm. and just to have the one project that was a little off schedule. I, I, I've had houses with. Anybody who's done any renovation or construction work, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they're getting everything on time and complete. You, it's and we don't do, Mr. Chairman, we don't do it alone. I mean, DASNY has been a, a, a great partner. A great partner. Um, and, um, you know, I always like to say that um, it's always good when I don't hear about a project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That means that, means that, that it's moving along just fine. Yeah. And then there are the projects that haunt you. Um, <laughs> 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 that have been completed yeah. and are currently yeah. under construction. So, um, you know, uh, I, I think between uh, Mike and, and his staff and, and Bob and his staff, um, a, a, a good crew working here.
I, I think you do. And you know, Halloween is over. All the tricks aside, <laughs> it's all things from here on. Let's hope. We're, yeah. we're, um, no, but, but really great work to to the whole team and everybody who's involved in this effort. It's a it's a teamwork, and that's what it takes. So, so thank you again, and, yeah. and also thank you for the. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, how bad is the groundwater infiltration at York? Uh, our sole function is the fact that the DEP, the Jamaica Water Supply, they stopped mm -hmm. pumping in Aqua Oh. When we built, when that building was initially built, the heating plant and the water plant was in the basement of the academic core. And when we built it, and it's about 30 feet below grade, at the time it was built, the water table was 30 feet below Bottom of the soil. Bottom of the soil. Oh. Thirty feet down. Now, since they've stopped pumping, the water table has risen, so that effectively it's about two feet over the base of the and so the water table has risen approximately thirty feet as a result of them not pumping that anymore. So we're, we've we've done a lot of investigation in terms of what can be done out there. We thought we had a good solution was to do some pumping of water, but it's not going to work because there were some gas stations and others on the north side of the property and the police start moving water, we will be migrating the water yeah, into them right. and we probably have to put up a... Bob, well, if you want to talk about, we hired ENIAD, um, it's the old coal shack firm. They oh, yeah. have okay. been selected as the architect to build the new... Uh, student services program. Maybe you want to talk about one of their ideas. Yeah, one of their ideas is to basically kind of using a heat well type of concept to make, to use the energy difference between water temperature below 455 degrees and using that as chiller water almost to basically reduce the need for chiller plants in terms of the new building. So while I wish it wasn't as high as it is because it affects our basement, but we may be able to tap into the, the water as an energy source going forward. It's got constant temperature, not quite as low as you'd like it to be, but low enough so that you've got a delta T or difference in temperature from what you're putting in there. You, know, you get energy from it. So the engineer is very excited about potentially using that concept in creating Sounds like pumping does not work because well, you got surrounding. Pumping's not going to work, so we are. You got surrounding we're, water. Well, we're going to move, and what happens is you we're create pumping. a gradient, and you yeah. basically draw contaminants into otherwise right. uncontaminated water. And you've got to get, you've got to deal with that as real happening. Okay, so I probably I used to approve all the gas stations, and they all leak. Yes. <laughs> 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 but the, um, so we're looking at some other potential solutions which involve either building a slab up or waterproofing in some kind of bathtub, which is a very difficult thing to do in that area. But mm -hmm. the engineers are looking at that and we're going to the different yeah. solutions. So we thought we had a good one that just when we did the full sequence, full analysis, it turns out that it's not quite personal. Mm -hmm. good and just also, Mr. Chairman, I just want to thank Gwen and her staff. Um, you know, we put a lot of work into the capital budget. Yeah. We meet with the campuses a number of times. We get sign-off from the presidents. You know, when I first started here, um, we came out with the capital budget. A number of presidents came over to me afterwards and they said, well, how does this get on the list? I, you know. Uh -huh. So now we really work very closely with, with all them. the campuses and make sure that the vice presidents for administration meet with the presidents priority is, uh, uh, if you're not happy with it, then let's set a priority that you are, but uh, now we don't get college presidents to come to us and say, what's going on? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't, I, the, only, the only thing I get now is praise for the involvement that we have right now when I go around to the college campuses yep. and, and we talk about that, so it's, it's good work, and thanks, Gwen, for that, uh, getting those commitments. Um, any, anything else to this was like for information only, but I don't know very if Mike good. Has anything you want to add. Um, um, one thing that you see in the in the trends, because we're getting away from these very large mega projects mm -hmm. and getting into smaller projects, is there's, there's a very big difference between the average cost per project that we were seeing mm -hmm. to what we are seeing now, and it's probably a factor of ten difference. Mm -hmm. So we have many small projects as opposed to these. Very large projects. It's much work 
Mm. Right. Do yes. with small projects. Right. 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 So I mean, ten times right. the cost. It's, it's like eight times. I mean, the work is almost that's right. too much. So yeah. it's become a very. Right. There are a lot of projects. As I was mentioning we have almost four hundred of those smaller projects out there. All of these state of good repair projects. They're not like hundreds of millions of dollars. They're yeah. like a million dollars, two million dollars. But there are a lot of them, yeah. and they require a lot of. It's the same. You have to put the same set of contractors on board. Yeah. You have to do the same procurements every time. And all and all of those projects are done in the facilities that are occupied, <laughs> as opposed to on the site that you're building. You know, exactly. so it, that that adds to the uh, yeah, challenges. Boiler room yeah. and chiller in places. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Howie, uh, do you have sure. something more to report on the fiduciary acknowledgement form? Or I think we understand. It. You, have signed, I see you signed it already. Only if you have a couple. Thanks. Okay, good. Thanks, Mike? No, I think that that's all. I'll just leave it at that. You know, as far as the the differences in the sizes of the projects and the numbers of projects is, is very important distinction because of what's going on with the budgets. Mike's staff. I mean, John Jay, we have ribbon cutting, gas and gas It doesn't look like they have any that urgent items. Yeah, probably way too much. Okay. All right. Then I'd like to. I mean, it, it's it's a little early to wish everybody a happy holiday. <laughs> it's like insane, and I begin to create anxiety because of all the things you have to do. But I would sort of put a postmark uh, until later this month uh, for Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and give thanks to uh, all of your family and and all of your significant others for for the work that they do in helping you to do the work that you do for the City University of New York. It's great work. Uh, we should never take it for granted. We really yeah. shouldn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm a believer in this work. Uh, I, I, I love what we do here. It's it's sexy. Uh, it's exciting. Uh, so uh, I get excited. We have to you continue. You should see the room and the chiller room. I, I, I get turned on by those types of things. <laughs> and, and I think that we should continue to build that enthusiasm for the work that people are doing because it is hard work and I just want to thank all of you for that and as you go into you know the rest of the holiday season uh, I want to wish all of you after um, Thanksgiving the rest of the holiday season that you enjoy it and look forward to seeing you around when I know we will and, um, and Chairman, when is the just, next uh, well I just want to say that um, the holidays are among us are here we already <laughs> sent out our Christmas uh, party uh, oh, notice okay. so okay. yeah when, when is that going to be December 13th They're going to have to rebrand. <laughs> you look at postal uh, operations yes. in Europe, they're yeah. selling um, you know, all types of things. There. Really? They're yeah, 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 so yeah, exactly. Be, uh, yeah, you can get yes. uh, you know, drugs there, uh, toiletries and everything. In oh, postal. okay. So in Denmark and in Germany, they're really rebranding. We're going to have to do something. But <laughs> okay. right, well, thank you very much. The no, meeting is adjourned. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Who collects the form? Yeah.